Hello, this is Gary at Jack Raven Bushcraft. Thank you for watching our video. So this week I want to talk a little bit about birch. So got one here, one here. Uh, um, when you're out uh, in the in the woods, that kind of thing, you're likely to encounter either silver birch or downy birch. Um, in broad terms, silver birch, the branches tend to swoop downwards and a downy birch they tend to go more upwards the the way to find out is to look at the leaf downy birch has a slightly um downy um yeah a uh, little yeah a little hairiness going on with the the leaf there we think of them as uh being silvery color but that's not always true there is quite a lot of variation in them um so these are kind of silver ish um but as i say that isn't always the case Either side of me and behind silver birch birch but not particularly silver this one almost a orangey uh, kind of uh, tinge going on with it and whilst birch is relatively distinctive there are uh, uh, there's, there's one that you could potentially mix it up with so this isn't birch this is a wild cherry birch is the second most common tree in the British Isles so it comes in just after oak it'll grow in a very wide variety of habitats so right now we're in the woods and it, it's going to be quite happy growing in the woods it'll also grow on uh, the it'll grow on the coast it'll grow on moorland it'll grow on heathland quite often especially on the heathland conservation groups are there trying to pull the uh, the little saplings out the ground um, it grows really really quickly uh, it is known as an early colonizer or a pioneer species so if you kind of go back in time to when the uh, the ice sheet was retreating north uh, and as the ground started to thaw out the, some of the species that came in immediately afterwards well we had things like um, birch sallow scots pine that kind of thing so grows vigorously now for us in bushcraft it's a, a really useful tree and it's one that is worth being able to um, identify as i said earlier they we kind of have this notion of them being per, uh, um, white but that's not always the case especially when they're young so I, in my experience some of the young ones can quite often be um, a pinkish color a purpley color and from the bark alone you could kind of mix it up with um, with cherry a young cherry so what can we do with it well of course come back out in maybe another 10 weeks or so and you would be able to to tap the tree um, so extracting sap from it so generally about the kind of second half of um, March for that now I wouldn't advise putting a hole in we, we used to do that in the old days um, no I wouldn't do that what we would try to do is just find a tree with a branch at a at a nice height and just basically snip the end off the branch and hang a billy can off it and collect the sap that way so we can collect up the birch sap uh, it's a lovely word for carving so we on our carving courses we'll often use um, birch if we're doing things like spoons and um, spatulas cooksers all of those kinds of things um, we can use the bark uh, I mean th this unfortunately this one kills the tree but we could we can take the bark off it to start making um, uh, shrink pots that kind of thing we can make uh, birch oil from it so it, it's a there's a whole lot of things there without even coming on to the, the kind of the, the most important part for it so that and, that and that's around fire lighting so birch is your king of fire lighters and it gives us two things it gives us tinder and it gives us our first stage of kindling so in terms of tinder we've got this the bark here you can see just peels off All right, so now when we peel off birch bark we're not harming the tree it's a it, it sheds its bark it's part of a, a natural process so we don't we don't harm it so essentially we could see these little bits like that and you can just peel them 
away. Now this is absolutely first rate as tinder. Uh, so I can light that. My preferred thing, my preferred method with something like that would be to use um, a fire steel. So a birch bark fire steel combination, um, it is a winner. So sometimes you can cut, you can wander around and you don't see that, that, that much bark peeling off at all. And under those circumstances, it's more often than not just a better use of your time just to walk a few, you know, a little bit further along because you might find another tree where it literally comes off like sheets of paper. Uh, and again, sort of certainly in my experience, the ones that seem to peel the most are the younger ones. So for lighting a fire, I mean that's a tiny bit, but I would I would want to go for a good handful of the bark there. Um, and as usual, any tinder I collect, it's going to go in my trousers pocket. So if there's any moisture in that, my um, body heat is going to at least start to dry it out. And then the other thing that birch give us are these little twigs. So definitely a, a purple color going on with these twigs um, so matchstick thin size twigs and as I say these are going to be fantastic for that first stage of kindling so once you've got your uh, tinder lit then this is what's going to go on afterwards now the birch family Betulaceae um, takes its name from a chemical called betulin so betulin is a triterpene and so it, it's flammable so triterpene a biterpene is turpentine so it's in that same kind of chemical um, grouping so that's the bit that makes this stuff really flammable so it's in these little twigs it's in the bark um, so again you know I can't help can't reiterate enough really birch because it's so common it is always going to be worth your while taking a little wander around and trying to find someone because it is really going to help you out with your fire lighting so hopefully guys that's uh that's something you're going to find useful something that's going to help you in your bushcraft uh adventures we will get some more content up um, next week. In the meantime, make sure you don't miss out. So subscribe to our, our YouTube channel or our, or our blog. Um, in the meantime, take care, stay safe.